Hello everybody and welcome to Music Industry Insights Worldwide and today we've got the awesome guest from Lagos in Nigeria, singer Afe Paul. Hi, how are you? Hi, Saskia. I'm, I'm very good. How about you? Very well, thank you. And thank you for coming along today to share your story and about some of the work that you've been doing. Um, so yeah, do you want to introduce yourself to the viewers? Tell them a little bit about where you're from, what you do and some more about you. All right. Thank you once again. I am singer Afe Paul, my stage name, and my birth name, Adura Bibi Afe. Let me know about you in that. Lovely. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and I reside there also. I'm a musician, full-time musician. I teach um, strings, instruments to children. I teach voice to adults. I teach music theory, and I co-founded a music school that's a startup in Lagos, Nigeria. Wow, that's fantastic. And how's the school going? Oh, thank God. Good, good. We are growing, we are, we are trying to expand. Oh, amazing news. And what's the name of the school? Yeah, Master's Peace Music House. Okay, I'll leave a description in the link below when we finish the podcast so people can find out the school and they can also find out a bit more about you and I'll leave all these oh. links in the description below. So how long have you been doing that for? How long have you been doing the music now? Okay, um, I've been doing music for over 12 years now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my first introduction to music was in the year 2010. But then I entered into full-time performance, say 2016, and that's about um, over eight years ago. And um, teaching music has been over four years ago, because I, I started June of 2020. Yeah, so started that. Uh, altogether, my experience in music, my, well, my first exposure to music, to doing it big time, um, is well about 12. And is love always been a passion of yours? Is it something you've always done from a very young age? And did you have a musical education? Hmm. Um, I didn't have a formal music education until last year when I took myself and came out of every limitation and every ignorance to go out and seek for how can I get educated in music formally? And so I started a postgraduate diploma in music at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. And that's because my first degree wasn't in music. Okay. Despite the fact that I've been a music person since childhood, I, I didn't have enough information to know that I could just study music in the university. But anyhow. Yeah. Well, that's great. And how's the music scene over in Nigeria? Tell us a little bit more about that and, and what's going on over there right now. Mm. Yeah, music. the music scene in Nigeria is, um, you know, we have the Western music, we have the African popular music. So yeah. when it comes to the Afro pop music, there is a bit of more acceptance, more acceptance in Nigeria for it because um, it's all about the beat, the vibes, the energy, and all of those. And so when it comes to Western music, that's the classical music and all of that, it, there is still room for, there's still fertility, let me just put that down. there's still fertile ground yeah. to explore it. And people are beginning to embrace it, of course, little by little. And so uh, perhaps we get there on the show. I'll tell you more about uh, parents and uh, children's attitude to music education relative to Western music. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And you also do choirs as well, don't you? So what kind of music do you actually do with your school and your choirs? What style of music is that? Yeah, in my choir, I'm a, I'm a faith person. Right? Yeah. I hold faith really strong. So the choirs are, I'm in are faith-based. So yeah. we do gospel, contemporary, and that. When it comes to my teaching of the instrument is not faith-based. It's about skill, dexterity, and any student, even if it is not faith-based, but can have the assurance that coming to this person, I'm going to be able to use my instrument or my voice 
to yeah. see any genre I would use. Awesome. Awesome. That's amazing. And what's the attitude like? Like you was going to say with the parents and, and, you know, people trying to get into music. What's the attitude like over in Nigeria? Do they take music seriously or do they still look at it as, OK, it's just a bit of fun? OK, um, I'm just going to say the large populace of Nigerians see music as entertainment. Yeah. There is not still much of taking music as a career, primary career that one wants to venture into. So the, the peak of music musical achievement still in the Nigerian popular opinion is entertainment. Right. So if you say you do music and, <laughs> and you can't entertain, and it's just about, I want to be serious, I'm playing, I'm practicing for hours because I have this piece to play, and you know what is entertainment to people is shaped by the environment, the culture, their yeah. view. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're still an emerging market. Do you see a lot more of the major labels and a lot more of the record companies now coming to base their south in Africa, in different parts of Africa, to try and capitalize on the explosion of Afropop and those styles and genres? Yeah, coming to training in Africa. If I get your regimen, right, what's how's music training, the attitude and everything? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. Okay, yes. Now there is more opportunity now than before in Africa. I'm not going to say. And by extension, Nigeria that I live in. Yeah. Right. But then the training now is a little bit directed to suit the African mind and the okay. Cool. To suit the Nigerian mind, right? You know what human mind does to music is to shape it. Yeah. We listen to music, we love it, we either understand it or we don't understand it, but we can love or not love it. Yeah. Or let me say there are some people of genres also can be music. Oh, we've lost you there. Hopefully you'll come back in a second. <laughs> Sorry, that's never happened before, folks, but we'll hold on in and hopefully we'll get the sound back. Um, I know that he's based in, in Nigeria and Lagos, so yeah, we're back online. I'm so sorry about that, listeners, but we'll keep going. Um, Singer, we'll be back on the line in a second. Sorry, we lost you there. The signal went, please carry on, no problem. Oh, oh sorry, I, I didn't know that. So, yeah. so all right, so the, the, the kind of music that appeals to each person or a, a, a set of people differ, right? And so that affects training too. You may not have a long spell of training with a particular student because the expectation is once that student can play and perform songs yeah, yeah. to entertain, and so the training is already designed to its end. <laughs> I get you. So it's step by step, but it's also put Africa on the on the world stage, shall we say, um, because say what, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't really hear much of the African culture, you know, and now the African culture has kind of exploded all around the world, which is fantastic. What's your views and feelings yeah. on that? OK, yes, I, I feel Africa holds the heat of music, let me put it that way. Yeah. And when I say the heat of music, I mean the very pop beat, right? Very up beat of music. Yeah, where like... everybody, if you're feeling bored, everybody, you can play an African music and then have to shake your body, you don't have an option, and all of those. So I see that that, that is bringing African music into the global light. Yeah. Because the world in itself is already, uh, it's already full of, you know, a lot of these ups and downs, <laughs> the world in itself is getting a little bit duskier, yeah. right? But then, you know, having the touch of the, having the African flavor in music uh, kind of lights up warmth. Some yeah. Of warmth. Yeah, yeah. That is not to say that, you know, I, I, I'm more of a, actually I'm more of a fan of Western music. Okay. I sing the, yeah, I sing the, I sing tenor, I sing classical, I play the classical violin. Lovely. I love, yeah, I love the, the scientific, the organized, structured, systematic nature of Western music. 
But nevertheless, I can't deny who I am innately that I still vibe to African songs that I that appeal to me. Yes. But nevertheless, I must say that African music is fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And looking back at your own career and in being in music and even classical music in Africa, what are some of those challenges and barriers that you've had to overcome and that you've faced to be where you are today? What are those? Yeah. I'll first say get, getting formal education in music and particularly, let me, let me say, um, quality music education yeah. could be a little bit high. It is not really, it's not very common, right? So, and opportunities that open to you to be able to get this formal education, the demand, it's going to demand good time, investment of good time for you to um, be good enough to audition for a particular music school where you will be able to get scholarship and to have diploma and not even degree certificate. Okay. So, up to now, I'm going to say that getting a quality formal education in Africa, Nigeria by extension, is still on the high side, not still um, common enough. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And secondly, yeah, on a second note, I'm going to say personally, okay, that has actually been my own challenge to you for now. Secondly, uh, the purchase of, let me say, setting up your life as a musician is also still expensive. Yeah, yeah. You want to get a good instrument, a yeah, good instrument, quality instrument, you need exchange rings, all of those things just come free. And you like, um, about this can go for um, two weeks in you know, and I'm going to use it to buy an instrument. Uh, you know, it's, if I'm alive, I'm going to yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, what, uh, you're thinking of the basic, yeah, you're thinking of basic things. How to just afford the basic things. Yeah. Expensive. So how much more getting quality? I can understand that. So how's that kind of impacted you in your career? And and obviously setting up a school, that can't be, you know, that must be really difficult and it needs money and, and resources. How did you manage to do that? Hmm. I, I, must, I must be very sincere with you. I will tell you that to a large extent, it slowed down where I know I should have been. Yeah. Or what I should have achieved. Yeah. Really, really it slowed me down. Because I had to come of age, like grow and be able to work for myself yeah. before I started to get my own violin, get my own guitar, box guitar that I could use. And okay, say buy this and start setting up my life to at least showcase myself yeah. as, a, as a musician. So it took a longer time. And then for the music school, I will even tell you that now we have a little of our own instruments. We rely on students getting their own instrument because it's actually a good practice that the students should have so they can practice. Yeah. But nevertheless, you and I know that as a music school, if we have the instruments to spare, we'll be able to reach more people. Because there are a lot of people who love music, who want to learn it, but like I said, can't afford to get themselves yeah. one instrument. So imagine we are we're going to reach more people, that's just the truth. I totally understand that. And, and it's kind of like people have to work a full-time job and then supplement their music from the job <laughs> and sacrifice in the real life. And then, <laughs> right, totally understand that. You remember be... mine. <laughs> yes, I know that myself. It's the, it's, it's the same here as well. If you if you come from a disadvantaged background or you don't have the money yeah. it takes a lot longer, and then you also need the right people in the right places to support you and build that team. So that's also something that's really, really important. And obviously over in Nigeria, What's the equality and diversity like in, in the sound and, and the people involved? Is it mainly more of the richer people getting involved in the music or are more of the, the, the middle class and the lower class people still able to access the industry and make songs? Okay, thanks for that. I actually was um, researching and I noticed that okay, Nigeria as a country has delved a little bit into EDI. Yeah. Right. And you know, like um, 
Fernand Myers said that equity or equality is being invited to a party, yeah. right? And diversity, diversity is being, I'm sorry, diversity is being invited to a party and inclusion is being asked to a yeah. dance. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. <laughs> but, so I see, but then you is still on a very high side, this issue of EDI. We still have a long way to go in Africa when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Nigeria herself has over 252, has over to be far between 250 to 400 ethnic groups. Wow. And so the diversity is, yes, the diversity is very high. And you know, the way a typical Igbo man thinks is different from the way a typical house man thinks, different from the way a typical Edo man thinks. And a Yoruba man, so like that. So all of this diversity could even make you make you hear things like, "Well, I don't." You, this instructor, music instructor, is he Yoruba? Is he Igbo? Is he a guy? Is he a lady? You know, I was speaking with a friend. Yeah, yeah. With a lady friend who is a musician, a trumpeter. And you know, there is this cliche. Uh, there's this cliche opinion that the, that trumpet is a man's instrument. Yeah. And so. She shared, she shared the story that she went to she, she got a client and the client was was um was not sure whether she's gonna do the job well because she's a lady. Yeah. You know, but then if not for clemency and she had determination, she okay, did it, took it up and did her best. She, the client later had to confess that as I'm sorry, I thought you couldn't do this because you're a lady. So mm -hmm. Then now coming coming to um people, the class of people who do music or who get education. The truth is getting music education is not for a struggling class. Okay. It's not for a struggling class. Because even if you eventually get to know that there's a place where you can get a scholarship, what it will take you to position yourself on that scholarship is going to cost quite some things that the struggling class, the struggling people still are still thinking about eating, wearing clothes, and um, and where to sleep. Yeah. Right. So true that yeah, more people will still embrace music. Should there be should there be inclusion? Allow women to sing tenor, allow yeah. women to play baritone, yeah. allow women to do this, allow men to play ballet, allow like just allow. Spread yeah. this thing. Spread Yeah, totally. I love that. And yeah. see more women yeah. as well. Do you see more women now coming into music? Because I know a long time it's been more male centered. Do you see more women now being able to access music too? Yes. In my circle, I will still count more men than women. Yeah. But download for the book, yeah, download for the vocal um, aspect of music. The vocal aspect of music now embraces women or ladies more. Yeah. Right. So it brings the you know, there is the soprano, there is the alto, there is and in choirs now. Yeah. Um thank, thanks goodness there's choir, right? Where women can sing soprano and alto and and then in instrumental music, women are coming up, I must say. And you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I would be very sincere to tell you that if there is any aspect of music that has, you know, if there is something in music that has allowed women, I'm going to say it's the, that is the uh, intervention of the Western culture, right? I mean, for, for this age. Okay. You know, back in the day, like in the time of you know what English people call forefathers, mm -hmm. at the time of the forefathers, there were yeah, there, there weren't really plenty of women singing. Okay. There were more men drummers. The women are only allowed to really dance when they are invited, but then in our age and era, women are now coming into Western music because. In so far, you can play that instrument. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. That's You're welcome. Cool. So we are beginning. 
uh, Instagram to you know, social media is also you know, so women also and in fact anybody all on uh, all of my wants to make money from social media and so you just got to show what you have. Fantastic. I was going to say, this is leads on to the next question as well. What would you like to see improve? I think you've already mentioned about the stereotypes and people mentioning about, OK, a trumpet should be for a man and women should be dancing, for example. There's one thing, but what else would you like to see kind of improve around the equality, diversity and equity in music and education? Hmm. All right. I will. I would love to see in Nigeria where gender, sexual orientation, um, your background, yes. all of those things don't determine or decide who can do what or who gets what. Yeah. Right. So if I come out and say, I'm a lady, I'm a lady and I want to say tenor, how do we not begin to see that are you sure you should be so proud of this? Can we just allow people to be free? Right? I've been, when we have a client, I just wish there's, there's more awareness where there is absolutely nothing in between allowing someone to show what they have. Yeah. Because that would be prejudice when you don't allow someone even show you what they've got yeah. before you conclude that they can't do it or can't do it. So I, I would love to see this improvement. I would love to also see more music observatories, music institutes, more well-established, better established. Yeah. yeah, but also, yeah, sorry, I need to, I don't know if I'm gonna get there, but there is something I'm coming up, I'm coming up with, but let me not go into it yet. Yeah, let me just say, yeah. I would really love to see, yeah, I would love to see a Nigeria where Music is for everybody, either male or female. There is no sexual advancement. There is no, um, there's no over expectation from because you're a man. Everybody just allowed to flourish in their own ability. I love that, and and obviously in Nigeria you've got different cultures, you've got different religions as well, at different ages. Yeah. I think that sometimes has an impact on the way people view, say, for example, women or LGBT communities, um, or even men, other men. Do you think that has an impact on that in in over Yeah, the, the impact is there. Yeah. Yeah. Africa as a continent and Nigeria as a country, we are highly um contributory. Yes. Right, we are we are a contribution society. We are we are highly community oriented, and to not forget, we are highly faith based, yeah. faith oriented, faithful, <laughs> religious. We are very religious. Yeah. yeah. So what I will say, what I will say can, of course, there has been an impact because. Religion, you can't come from a Muslim family and say you want to do Western music. Okay. It, it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't sound right okay. to most people. Yeah, yeah. And really it's supposed to be a problem. Right. It's not supposed to be a problem. I've seen a lot of Middle East musicians, kids with this. I've seen a lot of um, Middle East musicians who use the Western instrument, but I feel that um, exposure, that knowledge hasn't gotten here yet. It doesn't, it doesn't, that little deep into our culture, into who we are. Okay, I get that. I'm learning, you know, just listening to you and all what you say, it's really, really insightful. And thank you for sharing this amazing story with us and, and all about um, Nigeria, it's really useful. Do you find that being in the music itself has an impact on the way you feel and sometimes your mental health? Do you think sometimes that affects that with the pressure that you have with all these different stereotypes and stuff? Oh, please call it, sorry. Do you think it affects your mental health at times, being in music mm -hmm. and, and performing and getting up on stage and having to go through all these barriers? Has it affected you personally and the way you feel about yourself? Oh, okay. 
I do, I, it will be fun enough if I to visit this topic in depth. It could even be an internal discrimination or stigma. Yeah. Yeah. Where your faith based circle or your faith based um, social construct mm -hmm. is, is trying to stop you. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. It's trying to stop you from doing music that you want to do because of a particular way of seeing life or seeing things. Yeah. So I've actually fought my own internal battle, right? To be able to position myself properly as a musician. So really something I have faced, something that's a part of my personality too. I, I just happen to be a nay um I, I actually don't give attention to naysayers. Because yeah. I mean, if you want something you can feed from inside, please go for it. Yeah, it sounds like you're very dedicated and passionate and you believe in yourself. And I think that's a, a brilliant thing to take away from this talk is it doesn't matter where you're from, how much money you've got. If you really believe in something and you've got the passion for it, you'll make it happen. And I get that from you. Yeah. So we're Thank running you. out of time now. Um, is there anything, any major wins or successes that you would like to share with the audience? Anything you've got coming up? Any new things? Um, and also your links. So if people want to find you, they want to find your school, how would they do that? <coughs> Sorry. All right. Yeah, I, to an extent, I've been able to bring myself out of, excuse me, this. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> what was yes. it today? Okay, to so I've been able to bring myself, yeah. I really need to bring myself out to a, a set of some limitations, right? To come out, to come out in public, to be able to practice my music yeah. without uh, any limitations or any prejudice, right? And so that's why I've been able to join one of the, the first of all, an award winning choir in Nigeria. The, the biggest one, and we just won African Best Choir of the Year. And what's the choir called? Oh, you've cut out on me. You'll come back in a second. It might be the signal again. It's okay, no problem, you're still here. What was the choir called again? The 500 City Choir. Perfect, thank you. And what are your other wins and successes and what's the school's name and how can people connect with you as well? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm Singer Afro Paul on all social media. And I, th that's what you would need me to see, right? How can people contact me? Yeah, yeah. also on LinkedIn as well, aren't you? Because I'll share the link. I'll share the link of yours in LinkedIn as well. So there's a link in and there's your name. So I'll share those on the bottom of the uh, description below. So that's the name of your, your social media. You've got the name of the choir. What's the name of the school before we go? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm singer Afro Paul on all social media uh, platforms. And then the choir where I belong is 500 C choir. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you again for coming along to share your story. It's been awesome speaking with you. And um, we also met on the Arts and Culture Network run by Mark Wormsley, um, which is fantastic. So yeah, I hope to see you again there soon as well. All right. All right. Thank you, Saskia. Have a lovely evening. We'll speak soon. Yeah.